1, 2. Hello everyone. So we'll start FSE 2019. I'm Jeremy Jean, the general chair. I'm very pleased to welcome you in Paris for this uh, new edition of FSE. I just want to give you some small remarks before starting the technical session. So the program of FSE has been managed by uh, Florian Mendel and Yu Sozaki over uh, the four deadlines of the TOSC uh, journal. So in this conference will have three and a half days, that's new, uh, the half day. We have 36 papers in 11 sessions, and if you go on the website of FSE, you will have the links to go to the actual PDF, PDF of the paper uh, accepted to TOSC. I think first time we have a live stream on YouTube, thanks to the guy on the back of the, on the room. And we also have three invited talks, one today by uh, Gregor, he will talk to us talk to us about invariant attacks. Then tomorrow we have Maria about quantum crypto. And on Wednesday we have Jian who will talk about uh, security of SHA-3 based uh, constructions. FSC 2019 would not be as it is today uh, if we didn't have the help from many sponsors. So I would like to thank all of the sponsors that appear on this uh, slide. Thank you very much. <laughs> I would also like to thank uh, people that helped me organize uh, the conference, put everything in the bag and so on yesterday during the reception. So we'll not list everyone, but thank you uh, to all of you. And we have a lot of attendees for this FSC uh, this year in Paris. Uh, so of course, there are many, many French people. <laughs> and then Japan, China, and a lot of uh, other countries from all over the world, and one, about close to 170 attendees. And I think it is a record. I don't have the statistic for the previous years, but I think it is a record. So for speakers, so if you are going to speak at FSC, I just want to uh, give you a few uh, points. So please uh, look on the program, who, who is your session, session chair? Go find him or her, and then talk to her to see to put your slides on this laptop so that it will be a uh, screen uh, in the room. And you can try and test your slides before, during uh, coffee breaks or, or lunch breaks. And also, I will up your, upload your slides on the FSC website during the weeks 
So please leave a copy of your slides on this laptop so that I can upload your, your slides. If you do not want to upload your slides, just come and talk to me. So the venue here, this is a Bruxelles room. Uh, all the technical sessions will be held in this room. There are some water dispensers which are located at the back of the room. You can fill your uh, this. <laughs> And just a few, uh, a few things, I will lock the room during lunch breaks, so please uh, be aware of this. Uh, also, please do not leave uh, your valuables unattended in the room um, for safety reason and uh, yeah. And also we don't have, we cannot eat or drinks in this room, so water, water is okay, but do not bring uh, stuff from the coffee break on the lunch in the room, that's it. So breaks and lunches, so the coffee breaks, it will be the uh, same place at the, re uh, the reception yesterday, so it's just upstairs in the main hall of the FIAP. And the lunches, it's again one level up on the first floor, there is a restaurant which is there, so we'll have lunch uh, on today, tomorrow, and the day after that. Yes, so very important, the Wi-Fi. So there is the same information on the program that is in your bag, so the SSID is uh, we FIAP. The login is uh, with FIAP from last year, and the password is uh, internet. So for, say, for legal reason, you have to put your name and first names, and then it should work, it should work okay. Everything is um, written again in the, in the program. So the conference dinner, it will be held uh, tomorrow evening, and it's a cruise on the Seine River. It will last about two hours. And the meeting point, very important, it's 7.30 on the evening. And because it's a boat and we actually travel on the river, if you come in late, you will not be able to board the boat, of course. So please be on time, right? So we'll go around like this, yeah. It should be quite good. So the meeting point is, so we are here currently. The meeting point is Marina uh, de Bercy, so it's just here. It's five stops of subway uh, from here. You can click on the link that will, I will put the slides online. You can click on that to get the, the, the itinerary. And we've put two subway tickets in your uh, name tags uh, in, this, in this thing, so you can just take them to go to the marina for, for tomorrow. So you can board the train at the Glacier train station, which is just close to the, the venue here, and get off the train at Quai de la Gare, so it's only five stops, and then you can walk for about 10 minutes uh, to join the, the boat. And I've put some pictures to detail everything from Quai de la Gare up to the boat to avoid people to get lost. And also, we've printed a flag that we've put on top of a flagpole, so you can maybe uh, look out for this when you walk uh, to find the boat, right? So, yeah, to emphasize this, so we have two subway tickets in your name tags. And do not forget it because it grants you access to the boats, and also it displays your uh, meal choice uh, that you indicated during registration, so if you are vegetarian, fish or meal uh, for dinner. Uh, yeah, that's it. So we have a run session during FSC, so it's, it's going to be on Wednesday. Pierre and Brice will be, will be chairing the session, the run session. So if you want to submit something, and please do, uh, it's, you can find some more information on the website. The deadline for submission is tomorrow, uh, evening, so around five, and you can just send your slides uh, at this uh, email address. Okay, so Pierre and Brice managed to find some uh, good prizes, so I don't know much about this, but you can read about this on the, on the FSC website. So we also printed the card game, which is in your bag. We, you all received one. And I hope you will enjoy it. We enjoy it making it, so I hope we you will enjoy it uh, playing it. So I will not go over the rules now, but uh, you can uh, find them either in your bag or by clicking this uh, link uh, and go to the website. So that's it for me. I hope you will enjoy FSE and, and Paris more generally. Thank you.
Welcome to the first session. The topic of this session is cryptanalysis of SBN primitives. The first talk is cryptanalysis of low data instances of a four low MCV2, authored by Christian Ritterberg, Hadi Soleimani, Tuke Tisam. Hadi will give the talk. Let's welcome. Hello everyone and thanks for the introduction. So in this talk, I'm gonna talk about cryptanalysis of low MC for some special instances. This is the outline of the presentation. First, I will introduce low MC and our motivation and also the previous works. Then uh, I'll present our new technique and after that, uh, uh, I discuss how the purpose method can be uh, utilized to recover the key. And finally, I conclude. So as we know, for most of the applications, standard ciphers like AES, AES are suitable and efficient, but, but uh, for a range of new applications, uh, these ciphers are suboptimal. Actually, in these applications, uh, nonlinear operations are, uh, cost much more than linear operations. Uh, for example, we can mention some applications like multi-party computation, uh, fully homomorphic encryption, zero knowledge proof like uh, SNARK and SPAR, and very recently some quantum resistant uh, signatures. So the main goal of the primitive we shall use in this application is to minimize the number of ants and the multiplications. Uh, example of such uh, designs uh, includes low MC, Fluvium, Flip, MIMC, and very recently Rasta, which was proposed at uh, last crypto. Low MC uh, was uh, proposed as EuroCrypt 2015, and uh, actually it uh, creates a suitable instances for a wide range of uh, applications. Uh, for example, two submissions in the second round of uh, NIST uh, competition for post-quantum uh, cryptography uh, use uh, low MC as uh, uh, their uh, primitive. The run function is uh, uh, SPN, but a bit uh, uh, tweak. Uh, the designers uh, choose to use uh, partial nonlinear layer. It means that the nonlinear layer doesn't apply on the whole state. It only uh, applies on the partial uh, of the state. And uh, also the SPOX size is uh, as small as possible. It's uh, three bit SPOX and with the algebraic degree two. And these choices, uh, of course, uh, can make uh, the cipher vulnerable against statistical uh, attacks. So to provide uh, reasonable security against statistical, uh, statistical cryptanalysis, designers choose a linear uh, layer as invertible, binary invertible matrices that are uh, generated uh, independently and also randomly. Uh, and uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the uh, round, we also have key addition. The uh, round keys are generated by another uh, matrices. The uh, binary matrices are multiplied to the uh, master key, and then sub keys are generated. Uh, and uh, with, with uh, respect to the number of rounds, the number of rounds provided by the designers uh, in, the, in their uh, work, they study a lot of uh, uh, techniques and different uh, cryptanalysis and based on the given block size and also allowable data complexity and number of SPOXs per round uh, where we show by M, they, uh, have, they present a formulation for the number of rounds and uh, they show that uh, if we consider this amount of rounds, then the cipher is secure against uh, uh, this kind of uh, cryptanalysis. Uh, during uh, the process of the, <coughs> the designing of Bravitovich and uh, Lowen uh, propose uh, some uh, update for the uh, formulization to, uh, for formula for uh, computing the number of rounds to be secure against boomerang attack. And uh, at uh, Euro 2016, uh, we had uh, another paper on higher order differential, which uh, led to the second version of the formula for the number of rounds. Uh, 
And uh, in this work, uh, we present new chip analysis for some special instances of LUMC, which led to the new formula for the number of rows. And uh, it's important uh, to note that uh, LUMC uh, version 3 uh, uh, is uh, actually uh, utilized in different uh, schemes, for example, uh, signature scheme picnic or uh, some group signature scheme uh, uh, proposed by uh, Dan Bune and others, they use LOMC, so it's uh, widely used uh, in different applications. Uh, our work is inspired by previous uh, techniques, so let me remind uh, the basic uh, idea from the previous works uh, uh, rapidly. Meet in the middle uh, cryptanalysis is a well-known cryptanalysis that at least in the basic uh, scenario, it requires a very limited number of uh, data. And also, actually, it uh, only, it, it, it's independent of the in inner components. It's somehow, it's a, a structural uh, attack. However, it's not applicable on Cypher like uh, LUMC because uh, the, the key schedule uh, is strong enough and the sub key and round keys are generated based on the whole key. Another attack is differential cryptanalysis. It's a flexible, is a is a flexible uh, method that can be applied on a variety of uh, ciphers. Uh, but uh, designers of uh, LUMC, they provide a lower bound for the active boxes and then differential cryptanalysis is not applicable on the cipher. Another idea which was uh, proposed by Dimitri and Selkov in 2009 to apply an AES uh, was uh, the kind of combination of truncated differential method and meet in the middle of method. In truncated differential, instead of looking just one input uh, pair and uh, output uh, difference, input difference and output difference, we can see the set of input differences and set of output differences. Uh, however, they combine these uh, ideas to somehow uh, make uh, take advantage of uh, the positive properties of uh, both attacks. However, uh, the application of this kind of uh, method uh, is challenging on low MC because the linear layer of low MC is very strong. It's a bit oriented uh, matrix and uh, you cannot find really an efficient uh, truncated differential characteristics for few runs of the cipher. So what we aim to do in this work is to somehow exploit uh, these uh, well-known uh, techniques to take advantage of pos uh, positive uh, properties and then overcome the limitations such, such that it can be applicable on low MC. So let me first give an overview of the technique, of our technique. We divide the cipher into three uh, parts, uh, namely R1, R2, and R3. And for the first part of the cipher, we aim to find the differential characteristics with input uh, delta in, such that uh, the, this uh, characteristic holds with probability one. So if we have a deterministic differential characteristic, the idea is that independent of the value of the unknown key, we can predict the uh, difference at the output of the R1 round. Uh, then we ask the oracle to provide us uh, corresponding cipher text of the plain text P and P prime, such that the difference between P and P prime is delta E. For the second and third part of the cipher, instead of looking for a differential or truncated uh, differential characteristic with high probability, we aim to uh, find all of the reachable output differences after all two rounds. So we compute all of the reachable after all, all of the reachable uh, differences here uh, from delta R1, and uh, we save all of them in a uh, in a list. And we do the same for the third part from the cipher text and uh, for the uh, backward direction, and we compute all of the reachable differences from here to here. And in a meeting the middle approach. We can find, uh, we can compare two sets and find the common values in both sets. And if this value is unique, then it means that we could find uh, the value of the difference in the middle of the cipher, independent of the unknown key. And of course, and of course, if it's a unique value, then we can uh, do the same thing for other rounds and uh, obtain all of the uh, differences, internal differences of the cipher. 
So let's go to the details. Uh, for the first uh, part, uh, to have deterministic uh, differential characteristic, we need, we need to have all of these boxes be passive. So uh, each, uh, each round has m s boxes. Each s box has three bits. So over all rounds, we have three multiply m, multiply o uh, filtration. So if we consider the length of the low MCP, then we expect to have two to the b minus three m r deterministic differential characteristics. So to have deterministic differential characteristics, it, it's enough to uh, consider R1 as b over three m approximately. Uh, for the second and the third part of the uh, method, we need to somehow estimate the number of reachable differences. We uh, compute the uh, somehow exactly reachable uh, uh, differences in our paper more precisely, but here uh, I, 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 I prefer to uh, not to go to the details, but uh, just give an overview. So if we consider only one S-box and we fix the input difference, then the output difference of the S-box of low MC can get at most to the two different values. And uh, if we consider all rounds of the ciphers with the assumption all of the S-boxes are active, then uh, each round has uh, M S-boxes. So if we consider all rounds, then totally we have M R S-boxes. So totally we have two to the two multiply M multiply R different values at most. Uh, so the, com the time complexity for uh, computing the, all of the reachable differences and uh, creating the list is two to the two M R two for the th second part and for the th third part. And of course it should be less than two to the K because we want to have a cryptanalysis faster than exhaustive search. Another uh, limitation is uh, to avoid rank collision. Uh, to avoid rank collision, the number of rounds in the second and third part should be less than this value. Uh, and so, of course, we cannot uh, manage uh, this inequality because uh, it's a time complexity and we want to have a faster uh, attack than exhaustive search. But the question is how we can manage this inequality, how we can solve this problem. Because if we have more than one collision in the middle of the cipher, then it's somehow challenging. The idea is simple yet in, uh, very effective. We move from differential to polytopic uh, characteristic, which was uh, for the first time uh, proposed by uh, TSN at Eurocube 2014, instead of Considering one difference and the, pro the propagation of one difference, we consider D differences and tuple of D differences. And similarly, we can also estimate the number of uh, D differences available and reachable in the middle of the cipher. So for one S box, we have at most two, one S box of low MC, we have at most two to the three uh, different values at the uh, output of the S box. And if we consider our rounds, each round has uh, M S boxes, so totally we have M R uh, active S boxes in the worst case. So at most we have to do the three multiply M multiply R different values for D differences. And now to avoid any wrong uh, collision is enough to consider the dimension D larger than this value. So we can simply manage this by uh, actually increasing the dimension of the D differences. So far we have discussed uh, finding and obtaining internal differences of the, uh, over the cipher without computing the key. Now it's important to understand uh, how it affects the security of the cipher. We want to know if we know the internal differences in the middle of the cipher, can we retrieve the key uh, actually efficiently, how we can uh, compute, uh, obtain the key efficiently. So let me uh, remind the well-known uh, definition for S-boxes. Uh, we call an S-box uh, delta uniform if for a specific input difference alpha and uh, another uh, specific output uh, difference uh, beta for all of uh, alpha and beta valuable. The number of x that satisfied in this equation would be less or equal to delta. Uh, if, uh, for example, for low MC, low MC S box is two, uh, is two to the two, four uniform. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, so in general, if the S box is 2x uh, uniform, and if we assume that in the last rounds, all of the MS boxes are active, then we have two to the mx different solutions for a given input differences and output differences of the last rounds. And each of them, uh, each of these uh, solution uh, uh, leads to a specific value for the state before the uh, S-box and after the S-box, and each of them can uh, lead to a unique uh, subkey. And of course, if we use more pairs, then we can retrieve uh, the last round of the key. But the key point here is that we cannot retrieve the whole subkey at the, at the end of the cipher because the, the nonlinear layer is partial. So to be able to continue this way for other subkeys, we need to uh, present this uh, equivalent representation of, AA, of uh, LOMC. So this is the structure of LOMC. And if you look at the last two operations, both of them are linear. So we can simply swap them and consider equivalent subkey instead of original subkey. And again, if you look at this key addition and this key addition, as the nonlinear layer is partial, then we can combine this part and this part together, just like this. And then again, we consider equivalent subkey for the round before the last round. And of course, we can continue this way, and finally, we have this kind of presentation, uh, re representation for uh, low MC. So if I can retrieve this value of the, uh, for the last round of the uh, cipher, then we can simply decrypt one round and again apply the method to retrieve the subkey for other rounds. These are the results of, the, uh, of our attack. For example, if you look at uh, uh, this instance, the key length is uh, 256, the number of rounds is 158. The allowable data is 16, and number of S box is 1, and block size is 120. And the time complexity of the attack is 2 to the 165 at most, which is uh, notably uh, faster than uh, 2 to the 256. Uh, the key point here is that uh, if in our formulation we have found that if the block size is larger than the key size, then it's better to use conventional uh, differential characteristics. It means that uh, D differences with dimension D1, like conventional difference, D differential. And uh, when the block size and key size are equal, are equal, then the dimension two is the best choice. And of course, when the block size is much smaller than the key size, then we can increase the dimension of the uh, D differences. For example, we consider D uh, four, and then we can avoid any uh, run collision in the middle of the cipher. So all of the uh, instances uh, we, we could attack, they have the same uh, structure, same pro property, that the number of boxes in each round is uh, very limited. For example, one, five, one, five. So it's only applicable on low data instances, and also the allowable data is also very limited. So it's only applicable on low data uh, instances of low MC, but it's a very important family, uh, a class of uh, low MC family of cipher because it's already used in uh, some signature, post-quantum signatures, and uh, so it's a very important class of uh, low MC. So to conclude, we uh, present, a, uh, we propose a new presentation, representation for the block cipher with partial nonlinear layer. The presentation that we, uh, I just uh, introduced, it, it can be applicable on any cipher, SPN cipher with uh, non-partial uh, nonlinear layer. And we provide a new insight into the security evaluation of LOMC and also block cipher with partial nonlinear layer. And uh, our results uh, are the best results for some version of LOMC that led to a uh, new round formula. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Question? Any question? So have you tried this techniques on other partial SPN ciphers? 
Uh, yeah, for, so for example, if we consider Zorro, mm -hmm. then it's also applicable on Zorro or other ciphers, but um, in compared to other cipher, other cryptanalysis on Zorro, our results are not better. But uh, the point is that uh, our uh, attack uh, can uh, be applicable on Zorro and uh, independent of the linear layer. So if we change the linear layer, of course, differential and linear attack can not be applied, or at least it can be challenging to apply it uh, on uh, Zorro or similar ciphers. But our work is independent of the uh, linear layer and inner properties, uh, properties of the cipher. Uh, but yeah, it's not uh, like better than previous uh, well-known attack. Okay, thank but you. Naturally, it's applicable. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the next attack is cryptanalysis of AES, PIF, and is zero. The others are. Patrick Debe, Dezu Iwata, Ling Sun, Sui Sun, Yose Todo, Hao Yang Wang, Mei Ching Wang. And Ling will give the talk. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, the name of the presentation is Cryptanalyze of AES, PRF, and its Duo. Uh, so we will start with the background and motivation. Following that, we will give some rela related preliminaries. And then we will present the overview of our attack. Uh, then we will look into the attacks on AES, PRF, and Duo AES, PRF. At last, we will give the summary and conclusion. Uh, as we all know, cellular random permutation is one of the main primitives in symmetric key cryptography to realize some security functionalities, such as encryption and authentication. It is also the ultimate security goal in the design of block ciphers. Many block ciphers with standing uh, extensive analysis are regarded as pseudo random permutation, uh, for example, AES. Uh, in some modes of operation, the invertibility is unnecessary, and the security will improve if a pseudo random permutation is replaced with a pseudo random function. Uh, for example, in the CTR encryption mode and the authenticated encryption GCM, a highly secure set random function will ensure the security beyond the birthday bound. Uh, given some candidate block ciphers, there are several techniques that enable us to transform set random permutation to set random function. However, all these techniques endure a considerable efficiency cost. So to maintain the efficiency uh, based on the dual of encrypted davis meyer structure, uh, many can many Davis proposed a delicate design called fast PRF at last FSE. Uh, given an iterative block cipher EK, we donate the Uh, we do donate the first half part of EK as EK1. The output of, of PRF equals the XOR of these two values. Uh, AES PRF is as efficient as AES. However, the efficiency comes at the cost of provable security. Uh, the pr the provable security results of EDMD uh, requires the the components to be independent permutations, which is no longer applies to AES PIF. So we want to reconsider the security of AES PIF in our work. Uh, we mainly focus on these open problems. 
Uh, firstly, in the previous FSE paper, S equals two is left as an open open problem, and uh, we handle it with impossible differential and zero correlation attack. Uh, besides, we consider the, uh, the security of many other variants. Uh, we also consider the security of the dual version, which we call dual AESPIF. The methods used in this paper include impossible differential, zero correlation, traditional differential quick and meeting the middle attack. So this is the structure of AESPIF. Uh, the whole, the full, the full encryption state, the full encryption of AES is divided into the first S rounds and the last T rounds. The output of AES PRF <coughs> equals the state encrypted by the first S round and the state encrypted by S plus T rounds. Uh, we also consider the security of the counterpart of AES. Uh, the full encryption is also divided into two parts, but the plan text is used as a fit forward. Uh, clearly, the, in this two structure, when, when S or T equals to zero, they are insecure. So in the following discussion, we only focus on the cases where S and T are all equals, are all greater than zero. Before we look into the concrete attack, we give the overview. For the attacks on AESPF, when, when S is uh, lower than two or <coughs> lower than or equals to two, uh, we use the we use the impossible differential and zero correlation method to launch the K recovery attack. The main observation is the second part is a permutation so that we can construct trivial impossible differential or trivial zero correlation linear approximation for the second part. Uh, in the impossible differential attack scenario, uh, the non-zero input difference and zero output difference constitute a nature contradiction and they complement this impossible differential by the propagation rule of differential. And in the K-recovery phase, uh, uh, given a pair of plan tags, uh, since the second part is an impossible differential, the output difference here must be the, must equal to the out, output difference here. So for the first S round, we know the input difference and output difference. Uh, by the property of the S-box, we can recover the K involved in the first S round. And in the zero correlation attack, uh, we, const we construct a trivial zero correlation approximation with zero input difference and now zero output, output mask. And then we get the subcase involved in the first S round and uh, use the value here and here to com compute the, the value of the zero correlation statistic. If the value of the statistic is lower than a predetermined threshold, the guess sub k will be rejected. And uh, when t is, t, no, t is no more than four, we use zero correlation method to realize the distinguishing attack. The core observation is to construct an iterative zero correlation approximation for the second part. So by the propagation rule of linear mask, we know the input mask must be zero. So only use the output value enables us to, com to compute the zero correlation statistic. And uh, when the value of the statistic is lower than a threshold, and we will say the, they are not fit with AESPRF. And then since the best, best attack resource for AES is based on meeting the middle attack, so we also study how these techniques can be applied to AESPRF. For all, all variants of AESPRF reduced to seven rounds, we give meeting the middle attack. 
since dual AES-PIF is the counterpart of AES-PIF, <coughs> the, the, the attacks are very similar to those for, for AES-PIF. So when T is less than or equals to two, we, we, we attempt to use the weakness in the first part to, to, re, to realize to K realize recovery attack. So after, get, after gets the subcase involved in the last T round, we use the difference of values here and here to check the contradiction. If a, sub, if a guess sub K indeed, indeed uh, result in a contradiction, we, we will reject the guess sub K. And when S is no more than four, we use differential method to launch K recovery attack. The main observation is the second part is the permutation. So when a pair of plan text collect as the output, then they must collide before the permutation. So we construct, we construct a iterative differential for the first S round and use the property of the S box to recover the involved sub K. So now let's look into the concrete attack on AES-PRF. Uh, the first attack is impossible differential attack uh, first, we, we construct a two-round possible differential, and since since we regard this part as a permutation, so uh, so the output difference here must be the uh, must equals the output difference of the PRF. So we construct structure as a plan text and save the pairs with output difference of this form. Then we know the output difference here. So for the first two rounds, we know the input boxes. We know the input and output difference. With the property of the S box, we can uh, obtain the partial information for the first sub K. Similarly, uh, we know the input and output difference for the second sub byte operation. So we can derive the partial information for the second sub K. Uh, when the first two sub K are compatible with the K schedule, uh, we will reject it since this K validates this impossible differential. Uh, the second one is a zero correlation linear attack. Uh, we uh, set the input mask and output mask as this form, and in order to compute the value after the first, uh, after two, two rounds of encryption, um, we get the involved subcase and compute the value here, uh, and then we use the value here and here to compute the zero correlation statistic. If the value of the statistic is lower than a threshold, we will reject the involved subcase. Uh, comparing to the <coughs> impossible differential, we release the a tax scenario from chosen plan text to, to known plan text, but the, the complexity increase, increases. Oh, we want to notice that in these two attacks, uh, we, we don't restrict the length of the second component. And uh, this, works, uh, this attack works only if this part is a, random, is a permutation. The second attack is, is a distinguishing attack based on zero correlation uh, method. The main idea is to construct an iterative zero correlation approximation here, and then we can only use the value here to construct zero correlation statistic. So the case step is to construct 
uh, is the construction of the iterative zero correlation approximation. To reduce the complexity, we need to maximize the number of non-trivial zero correlation approximation. So we ex exhaustively search for all the truncated linear masks. Uh, for the three round case, we find that the um, the input mask has at most 11 non-zero bytes, and for the four-round case, the input mask has at most eight bytes. So with this distinguisher, we realize the distinguishing attack for the corresponding primitives. The last one is, is, is a meet-in-the-middle attack. We use the conventional four-round distinguisher Given a third set constructed as the first round, uh, the output sequence of 255 differences is fully determined by 25 byte parameters. So the number of possible sequences is reduced from this value to this value. And in the k-recovery attack, we put the four round distinguisher in the middle of the PRS. Uh, the, the concrete attack is very similar to the attack uh, for AES. In the offline phase, we construct a hash table to store all the sequence here. And in the offline phase, we construct structure as a plain text and uh, select those pair, follow, follow this differential pattern, and uh, get the intermediate state to recover the involved subcase. Uh, the attacks for dual AES PIF are very similar to the AES PIF. Uh, for, for a given pair, we, uh, for, since the first part is, is an impossible differential, so the difference here equals the difference here. So for the last two rounds, we know the input difference and output difference and use some techniques, we can recover the involved subcase. A zero correlation attack is similar. We get the involved subcase and com compute the statistic with the value here and here. Uh, the last attack for dual AES PRF is a differential attack. Uh, the main observation is the second part is the permutation. So by controlling the difference here, we can control the internal difference. So, uh, so the key step is to construct a, an iterative differential for the first four rounds. And the differential we use is uh, illustrated on the right. Uh, in the k-recovery attack, after de detecting a collision as the output, we know the input difference and output difference. Then we get the internal, state, internal difference here and here. With all these known differen differences, we can derive the input and output difference for all the four sub-byte operation. And then with the property of the S-box, we can derive the involved sub-K as a colored byte. So this attack reveals a weakness of dual AES PIF. That is, by controlling the output difference, we can control the internal difference. So now we finish all the attacks involved in the paper, um, and this table summarizes all the all the attack results involved in the paper. Uh, firstly, we improve the previous attack when s equals equals one, and uh, we also ob uh, we also find that for these two construction, they only have one round as security margin. 
So based on based on this attack, we give a comparison comparison between AES PRF and dual AES PRF. <laughs> Firstly, for the from the feasibility of differential attack, we know the security of AES PRF is higher than dual AES PRF, and this is in uh, consistent with the discussion in the previous FSE paper for the preference of EDMD structure uh, over EDM structure. And the second observation is both this construction have only one round as <laughs> security margin. So it's interesting to consi consider the choice of the parameter. Uh, the balance case is a nature choice of the design. However, our results indicate that S equals to four is potential to be more secure, since in this case, the security margin increased. So we think it's also uh, it's still interesting to consider the security of the, of the re remaining variants. Uh, that's all for the presentation. Thank you for your attention. Any question? If no question, we will move on to the next talk. The next talk is also given by Sun Ling, and the title is More Accurate Differential Properties of LED64 and Midori64. Uh, Sorry. Uh, can you hear her? Yes. Okay. I hope now. <laughs> okay. Uh, the name of the presentation is More Accurate Differential Probabilities uh, Properties of LED64 and Midori64. Uh, we will start with a background and a contribution. Following that, we will introduce the related preliminaries and then we present uh, an automatic tool for the search of differential. After that, we provide more, more accurate differential analysis of LED and Midori. At last, we will give a conclusion. Uh, differential cryptanalysis is, uh, is one of the most fundamental techniques uh, targeting symmetric K primitives. Since its introduction, uh, many investigations managed to achieve sec uh, provable security against it. Among these works, uh, many researchers uh, want to provide more accurate distribution of the fixed-k differential probability. Apart from the theoretical research, another strong trend in the the field of differential is the automatic tool for the search of differential trio or differential. However, most of the techniques uh, focus on the search of differential trio. Although we are able to obtain a large, amount, a large number of differential trio, how to use this trio to, to launch more accurate differential cryptanalysis is an open problem. Based on this observation, we focus on this. Uh, we focus on these essential problems. Firstly, we consider the fixed fixed k probability of a differential trio, uh, and then in order to deal with differential effect, we focus. Uh, we consider the fixed k probability of a differential when multiple trios are available. Uh, we also consider the VK ratio of a, uh, of a differential since, since it re reflects the effectiveness of differential cryptanalysis. The contribution of this paper can be divided into, the, into these three, three parts. The first one is we provide an automatic tool for the search of differential. Uh, we know the previous techniques based on SMT can realize the same uh, task. However, since we use, we, we, 
we want to use set solver to handle differential effect in the following. So we also prefer to use set here to finish the searching task. And the second contribution is we provide a, an automatic method for the search of right pairs of the step function. Uh, with this method, we, we found many iterative uh, and non-iterative non differential. And with the, with the new differential, we improve the previous differential attacks. The second part is we provide two models for the estimation of the weak case space. And we apply these models to the analysis of Midori 64. Before we move on to our, our, our results, we briefly recall some related preliminaries. Uh, the, concat the concatenation of, di of difference, differences for R plus one internal states constitutes an R round differential characteristic, or we say differential trio. The differential probability of a differential with input difference alpha and output difference beta equals to the probability that a pair satisfies the input difference and output difference simultaneously. For a k function, we can, de we can define the k differential probability accordingly. The expected differential probability equals the average value of the fixed fixed k differential probability over the whole k whole space. Uh, the weight of a differential over a trio equals to the negative binary logarithm of the EDP. Uh, Markov cipher is an ideal iterative cipher. For this cipher, the average differential probability over one round is independent of the output is independent of the input. So in the differential analysis, with the assumption of independent round case, the EDP of a differential characteristic equals the product of the EDPs uh, for each round. And the EDP of a differential equals the sum of the EDP for all, all differential trails within the differential. Since Markov cipher is an ideal primitive, this kind of evaluation may deviate from the real differential probability. Uh, many designers want, want to make their, make their cipher achieve provable security against dif differential cryptanalysis. Uh, modern ciphers are designed to withstand the ex existence of the dominating trio. For this cipher, uh, we, may, we can use the hypothesis of statistic equivalence to finish the proof of security. It claims that for most values of the K, the fixed K differential probability equals the EDP of the differential. Uh, afterwards, Damon and Raymond reconsidered the distribution of the fixed-k probability. Uh, they proved that for a k-alternating cipher, the number of red pairs under a fixed-k follows a po poison distribution. The, the parameter of the poison distribution is related to the EDP of the differential. It's well known that when the parameter of the poison distribution is sufficiently large, the, uh, it can be appro approximated by a normal distribution. For the approximated normal distribution, we know the probability that the k satisfy this con condition is about 50%. Uh, we call the case for fulfilling this condition the, the weak case. Uh, since when this k is, is used in a differential analysis, the, the, the attack is more likely to succeed. And uh, we donate the set of weak case as wk. 
Now we present the first contribution of our work. Uh, it is uh, an automatic method for the search of differential. The automatic, the automatic search is based on the set problem. It considers the satisfiability of a given Boolean formula, <coughs> and uh, we we use crypto mini set in in all our search for. One reason is it is compatible with the actual operation, and uh, the second reason is it supports the usage of searching for multiple solutions. The key step to realize the automatic search is to transform, uh, is to construct model for the components of the primitives. Uh, we transform the prop differential propagation rule for these components into set problems in conjunctive normal form, and then uh, invoke set solver to, set, to search for the differential trail. In order to <coughs> search for differential, we need to invoke the, invoke the set solver for several times. Uh, we want to remark that the number of solutions handled by the solver is determined by individual set problem. According to our experience, 2 to the 33 is an upper bound. Uh, although with this method, we, we, we are able to obtain a large number of differential trails, but the crucial problem is how to use this trail to conduct differential cryptanalysis more accurately. With this problem, we move on to the differential analysis of LED. Since we target the a differential with high probability, so we need to uh, generate a method to accurately evaluate the differential probability. Since the step function of LED is a public mapping, we find that the problem of computing the differential probability is equivalent, equivalent to the problem of searching for the right pair of a given differential so we turn to the problem of search for the right pairs of a given differential. The first step is to search for many trails within the differential, and then we generate constraints on the value of the right pairs. And then we convert these constraints into set problems and use set solver to search for the right pair of the trail. And the, the red pairs for all the trails constitute the red pairs for the given differential. So the remaining problem is how to generate this constraints uh, for the red pair. We first introduce a closely related conception. Uh, for a differential, uh, we combine all the, all the input values of red pair into a set F, and uh, uh, the, the output values of all the red pairs are, are organized as a set G. And the differential is called a, uh, called a planar differential if F and G are fine subspaces, and the mapping is planar if all the differential over it are planar. And it's easy to prove that the S layer composed of the parallel, parallel applications of S boxes is planar when all the S boxes have differential uniformity of four. So for the K alternating cipher, if the S layer is planar, uh, for any differential trail with input difference delta x and the output difference delta y, we know the set F and G are advanced Basis. So we can construct matrix and vectors so that for a, vec for a vector, if uh, a vector falls into the affine space if and only if it satisfies this, uh, this equation. And uh, since the structure of the step function follows the k alternating cipher, and uh, and LED utilizes uh, S boxes with differential uniformity of four. So with the previous two equations, we can derive the first constraints for the red pair of the step function. 
uh, this constraint is come from the difference of the differential trail. Apart from the constraints from the differential trail, they require the internal states of the red pair follows the encryption rule. So these three constraints can fully determine the red pair of a, of a differential trail. And then we transform this constraints into set problem in conjunctive normal form and uh, call set solver to search for all the red pairs corresponding to a differential trail. To sum, to sum up, uh, in order to obtain the right pairs of a given differential, we need to firstly search for many differential trails within the differential, and then generate matrix and vectors corresponding to the trail, and uh, uh, apply inset solver to get the red, red pair. With this method, we, we have found many iterative and non-iterative differential for LED. And with the improved differential, we improve the previous related key attack. Now, uh, the, the last part is about the, the differential analysis of Midori 64, considering the case schedule. Uh, in this part, first we, firstly, we will see for each differential trail of the differential, we can derive a subspace of the k space, and this space covers the k space of the different differential trail. And uh, the the union of this set is related to the k ratio of the of the differential. And when a k falls into more than one space the corresponding fixed k probability will increase since the, since the corresponding trail will hold simultaneously. So from the view of the designer, we want to minimize the weak k ratio. And uh, from the, the view of the attacker, we want to detect the maximum number of compatible characteristics uh, and uh, the, k, the case validate all the compatible characteristics uh, might be uh, used in a VK attack. So in this part, on the one hand, we we want to uh, search. We want to give a method to evaluate the VK ratio, and on the other hand, we want to determine determine the maximum number of compatible char characteristics. For the k alternating cipher, when the S layer is planar, we can derive a linear constraints on the involved subcase. A differential trail have uh, the necessary condition for a differential trail have for a differential trail have red pair is the S sub k falls into the affine space. And otherwise, if the sub k falls out of this affine space, uh, the differential trail will ha have no red pair. So for a, for a differential consists of mul multiple characteristics, if a particular k leads all characteristics to be impossible trail, the differential under this fixed k turns into an impossible differential. And we donate this, this case as, this case as, as a, IK and uh, clearly the VK space is covered by the complementary set of IK. So in the previous description, we know the VK space of each trail is covered by the set, the set VK. So the VK space of the differential is covered by the union of this VK. And this probability constitutes a nature upper bound for the VK ratio. So we turn the problem of evaluating the VK ratio into uh, to, to a problem of estimate, estimating the size of this set. And since we find that handling the unions uh, the, the intersection set is more convenient than the union set. So 
So we apply the Morgan's law here to transform the union set into intersection set. And then we propose an automa automatic, automatic method to evaluate the sets of this set. The main, main idea is to convert the constraints on the set into clauses in conjunctive normal, in set problem and invoke set solver to solve the searching task. As a result, we provide four round, we provide two four round differential with leakage ratio much lower than, lower than 50%. And uh, in order to validate, to validate, validate the theoretic results, we, we do some tests with random k and the experimental results fits very well with the theoretic value. And from the view of the designer, if this kind of differential is utilized in, in a differential analyze, the attacker will prob probably fail since he can't find right pairs under the right key. Uh, the last the, the last the last problem is the maximum number of compatible characteristics. Firstly, we introduce a closely related problem. Uh, the max puzzle problems, uh, given a set of polynomial functions, the max max puzzle problems is to find find x such that it satisfies the maximum number of polynomials in the function set. And uh, in the previous dis dis description, we know uh, k falls into the, the, the vacant space of the trio if and only if the uh, k satisfy this linear constraint. And we donate this linear constraint as fg. Uh, we find that determining the maximum number of compatible characteristics is equivalent to finding case so such that the number of functions following this con contradiction, these conditions is maximized. Uh, to solve the max puzzle problem, there are many aut automatic methods, and we use an automatic method based on set to settle this problem. As a result, we apply this method to the analysis of a foreign differential of Midori. We find the maximum number of compatible characteristics, and uh, since the case uh, validates all the compatible characteristics, we'll have a higher differential probability. We find that on eight subspaces, the EDP of the differential is improved from about two to the minus 24 to two to the minus 16. And we also find that the probability that a K with this enhanced probability is at least two to the minus 12. Uh, all the theoretic results are validated with random tests. Now we finish all the contents of the paper and give a conclusion here. Firstly, we propose a, an automatic method based on set to search for the differential. And then we propose a method to search for the right pair of the step function of LED64. And at last, we propose two models to estimate the VK space of a differential. Uh, we want to remark that all the automatic methods can be genera generalized to analyze other efforts. And the results in this paper illustrate that for some lightweight block efforts with a simple case schedule, we need to pay more attention to the analysis of the differential. Uh, an open problem is how to utilize these uh, automatic tools to provide more pre pre precise evaluation for the linear high effect. Uh, that's all for the presentation. Thank you for your attention.
Christian? Do you think these techniques can be applied to icebox which are not uh, planar? Uh, I think maybe, but I think um, if you want to do this, you need to add some more techniques to handle that. For example, uh, when the when the input input space is not a fan space. Maybe the union of the advanced space, you can use other techniques to deal with that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And thank all the speakers of this session. And next is the coffee break. And the next session will start at 11.30. So let's come back at 11.30.